Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in our course Beginners Basics for FreeCAD 0.22 or what will be known as FreeCAD version 1. In our previous video we looked at the navigation around FreeCAD, learning how to pan, zoom and rotate around the 3D view. We explored the different views you can choose from the 3D view and use the tools such as Fit Selection to view and Fit All. In this video, we're going to explore the differences between surface and solid modeling and how that affects your choice between the part and part design. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. When modeling, we have many choices of workbenches, but when it comes to 3D objects, there are two main choices of workbench to pick from, and that is part and part design. For the first part of this course, we could use either, but we will stick to part design. Part will come later. This is because we're going to be first learning solid modeling. Solid modeling involves building a 3D model by adding and removing parts while maintaining a solid volume. Surface modeling, on the other hand, focuses on creating a 3D model by defining the individual faces. If we look at these two objects side by side, the solid modeling example and the surface modeling example, we see that they're very similar, except for this one looks like a shell. It has no volume to the thickness of these walls. These are faces and we can see inside. Whereas this one here, we can see the whole object is solid. The sphere that has been removed from here shows that there's still volume inside. Even if these walls were thickened and there was a void within, the walls will still have volume. Whereas this one doesn't. To simplify, think of solid modeling like building parts of a toy truck. If we're creating a solid model, we'd use something like wood to create this type of structure for the wheels. This has been created from such a process like using a lathe. In surface modeling, we can think of the process as being infinitely thin pieces of sheet metal. For instance, these are surfaces that have been added together. And I can hide these and show the surfaces within. Once the surface is all closed, as in this one, we can run a process over this to make this solid and therefore allow for 3D printing or CNC cutting. Surface modeling allows direct control over vertices, edges and faces. Surface modeling becomes necessary for shapes or features that cannot be done with solid modeling alone, especially for objects with curved surfaces. However, they are not completely separate. You can use both methods together. At first, we'll use the part design workbench, which has a more structured workflow than the part workbench. It's easier for solid modeling, but less flexible. Its main benefit is that it reduces the number of operations that is needed to create the finished model. For example, to create a tube flange in a part design, we'll first create this sketch. This is the profile of the object, the overall shape. It's used in a pad operation, which creates volume. The sketch is then placed on top of the face. And then another pad operation is performed to create the final object. The two pad operations are automatically fused in between to maintain the volume of the object, therefore maintaining it as a solid. Compare this to the part workbench, the object will look the same, but it's built in a different manner. First, the same sketch is created for the profile. From there, an extrude is created, adding a solid volume. Next, a sketch is placed again on the top of the face, followed by another extrude. At this point, this is where the two workflows differ. There has been no automatic union of the two parts, and they can be separated. To make that fusion, a union operation is created. The part becomes one, and the solid is maintained throughout. 
But we didn't have to create a fusion. The part workbench allows us to create such things as compounds. So we have the two extrudes, because they're sitting on top of each other and not intersecting, these can be grouped together in something called a compound object. A compound object appears as a single object, but there's no fusion between the two parts. Yet this can still be used in 3D printing or CNC. We'll get to the compound objects further on in the course. The part workbench allows for these different objects to be created. Solids, compounds, surfaces, and even objects that are hybrid of those. It creates a nested workflow. As you can see, we've got two extrudes within. These sit within the last operation, which was a union, also known as a fusion. Whereas the part design becomes a linear workflow. So each of the operations create features so we have a pad here and this feature on top of it with the last operation known as the tip. The part design only allows for solid objects. To create a solid object, each feature has to be joined together in the form of a fusion. The same if a feature is removed, it is created as a cut. Now we have chosen the workbench where we can proceed with our modeling, we will proceed with both the full process of getting the subject into the digital realm and exercises to help support those techniques and to learn FreeCAD from a beginner's perspective. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the new one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.